Time behind bars, hooking up with prison workers, and that's putting you at risk. ABC 15's Elizabeth Irwin got her hands on some telling information you'll only see right here. Elizabeth, what did you find? I found nearly two dozen cases where an inmate had inappropriate sexual relationships with an employee in a four-year period. Every time that happens, it not only threatens the safety of the employees and the inmates, but it also threatens your safety. When you see what we found in these reports, you'll understand what I mean. Sex in the storage room, kissing in the kitchen, romping in the restroom. It sounds like the plot for a salacious movie, but it's the reality of what's happening inside the Arizona State Prison System. ABC 15 News obtained these reports, spelling out in graphic detail the sexual relationships between inmates and employees within the Arizona Department of Corrections. Like this case, when, according to the report, an inmate had sex with a female officer in the visitation porter closet. Or this one, when another female officer admitted to having sex 10 to 15 times with an inmate in the prison's tool room. How about this doozy, a female officer performing a sex act on an inmate inside the prison's control room. It's the prison's central nervous system, the place where guards monitor what the inmates are up to, the controls that can open and close prison cell block doors. It creates disorder within the prison. That makes it a dangerous place, both for the pr prisoners and for the guards. Criminal defense attorney Russ Richelsoff spends quite a bit of time with the kind of people who tend to end up behind bars. He says anytime an inmate gets all buddy buddy with an officer, it's bad news for everyone. Whether it's, you know, sexual favors being traded, contraband being brought in. That's the other problem here. We're not just talking about sex. Oftentimes the employee will bring in banned items for the inmate. Things like marijuana, cigarettes, cell phones. How valuable are cell phones in prison? Um, it's my understanding that they're more valuable than drugs. It makes sense when you think about it. Prison phones are monitored. If you can get your hands on a cell phone, you can call anybody. So a cell phone is useful because I can transact business essentially with my associates outside the prison from a cell phone that I have in prison. That's a nice way of saying people behind bars can keep up their illegal gigs while serving time, even ordering hits on the outside. That's a public safety risk. It is a public safety risk. We don't want to uh, have cell phones in prison. It's a huge contraband issue. ADC spokesman Doug Nick agreed to sit down with us to talk about this big problem. There is that line between staff and inmate, and that line should never, ever be crossed. There's even a plaque like this in every prison reminding employees about that line. Officers in training get at least 16 hours on this subject alone. They have to sign these forms saying they won't cross it, and if they do, it's a felony. And it is punishable, potentially, by prison time. Of the 23 cases we discovered, 10 corrections employees were convicted of a crime. In 12 cases, the county attorney's office decided not to prosecute. One case was dismissed. None of these employees works in this department any longer because we do take it so gravely seriously. But clearly the penalty isn't enough to deter everyone. I would probably guess that for everyone that's been caught, there's nine other incidents where they haven't been caught. Is the department doing anything different to get this number even lower in the future? It's uh, something that we take seriously. We're always looking at our policies and procedures to make them better. It might surprise you to find out in almost every case we found it was a female employee with a male inmate. Research shows in many cases women form that emotional connection and that's what leads to them crossing that line. Steve